in Hellfire. The depictions of heaven and hell are some of the most striking passages in the Quran. Like many of the scripture's verses, these depictions of the afterlife reflect the location where the Quran was revealed. The imagery of heaven and hell seemed geared specifically to an audience of desert dwellers. Heaven is portrayed as a lush and water-filled garden oasis. Descriptions of hellfire, likewise, emphasize heat and burning, and things like cauldrons of molten copper that are poured down the throats of thirsty individuals as opposed to water. So, again, taking the pain and the suffering that's natural in that environment and bringing that up a level in order to describe what the suffering of hell is really all about. To Muslims, the only sure way to achieve salvation on Judgment Day is to follow the Quran. But interpreting exactly what the Holy Book means has been an area of controversy for centuries, in part because Islam has no single religious authority. There is no hierarchical structure in Islam. There is no such thing as a church. And therefore, people are pretty much at liberty what opinion to take. Making matters more difficult is the seeming paradox. If God wants to reveal his message, why is the scripture sometimes so cryptic? Chapter 3, verse 7. It is he who has revealed to you the book with verses which are precise in meaning and others which are ambiguous. No one except God knows its interpretation. Most Muslims believe the only true interpreter of the Quran was Muhammad himself. As God's chosen messenger, it is said that he understood all the revelations, the verses that were concise and direct, as well as those that weren't so clear. As such, throughout the history of Islam, Muslims have looked to the accounts of Muhammad's life, his sayings, and his actions to help explain the Quran. The Muslim community holds that everything which Muhammad said and did is a perfect manifestation of the will of God, and in fact that his life too is revelation in the same way that the Quran is revelation. But studying Muhammad's life hasn't fully explained the eternal word of God. For centuries, different Muslim sects and schools have fought over competing interpretations. Some have used their reading of the text to try to justify killing fellow Muslims who they believe have strayed from the faith. Others claim the Quran supports a militant stance against those of different religions. The Quran is sort of quite an elastic document. You can find things in it to justify one side or the other. But you know, often people do it when they're quoting from Lincoln or Washington or Jefferson. You can find things you're looking for, and it's the same with, with the Quran. 1,400 years ago, the Quran was revealed to a small desert community. Today, it's the cornerstone for 1.3 billion believers worldwide. Since the first revelation in a cave outside Mecca and throughout Islamic history, Muslims have strived to live the teachings of the Quran. What each person has found in the scripture's message is his or her own interpretation of the will of God. The Quran needs to be understood in the context of what one great scholar of Islam said, it being an ocean. An ocean is a vast, mysterious creature. For centuries, Muslims have discovered in that ocean the inspiration for love and fear, knowledge and law, anger and violence, mysticism and ritual. Their belief in the Quran has changed history. As with any religion, scripture can inflame passions, triggering the worst in those who claim to be living its message, or bring humanity ever closer to the divine.
the Quran. For 1400 years, Muslims have sought to uncover the secrets concealed in its verses. The Quran has several levels of meaning, and you discover them by constant reflection and by rendering the Quran into an open text. Its words have inspired civilizations to greatness. Islam spread within the first hundred years of its existence and created an empire greater than Rome had seen it. Yet some have found in the Quran the basis for a violent ideology. There are many religious figures who are very emotional who are interpreting the Quran in a manner which suggests confrontation and violence and death. What then are the true meanings of the Quran? They say that uh, little knowledge is very dangerous. Just to know how to read the Quran is not enough to understand what the Quran is saying. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan the Quran is the holy book of Islam. Over a billion Muslims worldwide believe it is the direct word of God as handed down to the Prophet Muhammad in the seventh century. Unlike the Bible, the Quran does not have a traditional narrative structure. Instead, it is made up of 114 chapters organized mostly by length. Some are pages long. Others, just a few phrases. According to Muslims, God revealed the verses of the Quran to Muhammad over the course of 22 years. Scholars compiled them into written form only after the Prophet's death. Deciphering the Quran's meaning, therefore, has long presented a challenge. It doesn't tell the story of Islam. It doesn't tell the story of the Prophet Muhammad or the early Muslim community. It really doesn't tell any stories at all. The Quran is essentially God's dramatic monologue. For a minority of Muslims in the 21st century, that monologue has been used to justify an extremist political philosophy and a violent strain of religious fundamentalism. Chapter 58, verse 5. Those who resist God and his messenger will be crumbled to dust, as were those before them. This is how many, both Muslim and non-Muslim alike, have come to view the Quran. But while the holy book does contain passages that call for violence, this complex and mysterious scripture also has plenty to say against it. Chapter 5, verse 2. Cooperate with one another on furthering good and virtue, and do not cooperate on furthering sin and aggression. For the vast majority of those who live by the Quran, these messages of peace and compassion are its true guiding principles. For many Muslims, the Quran is the, the source book for life. In other words, it's not just a, a book that tells the Muslim about his or her relationship to the divine creator, but it's also a, a source book of, of moral guidance. How can two worldviews, one of peace and one of violence, coexist within the same book? Those who want to present a picture of Islam as a violent religion will focus on those few verses and say the violent thing. And the ones who want to say that Islam is all sweetness and light and toleration will pick the other half. Neither is, of course, entirely true. These contradictions are in many ways the product of more than 1,400 years of culture and conflict. <laughs> 